Craig, we got to talk about this final clip before you go. Yeah. Um, obviously with the stuff that's going on at the moment as well. But you signed for Cardiff City, your home club. And we explained a bit how you kind of went to him last time on part one. Um, but what was it like going back to Cardiff? The first one, um, when I went back, it was it was like, I sort of wanted to do it. Um, there was problems with, not just with Man City at the time, it was, um, they didn't want me to go to a rival team, like Spurs again. Um, they were there, they've always <laughs> he been never there. went to Spurs. I know, I, listen, they weren't from the will of trying and I wanted to as well at times. Yeah. Um, so I understood that. So they were happy for me to go Celtic, um, Valencia. Dance around there, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you were never going to go with Italy, was you? No, no. Didn't like it? At that time, no, I, I did as a kid growing up. I yeah. loved Italian football, but at the okay. time then it was it was on the curve. Yeah. Um, but then it was, um, I was in Cardiff and I was speaking to Gary Cook and he was like, well, where are you now? We'll come and see you. And I was like, well, I'm in Cardiff. And he was like, well, what have you thought about Cardiff? And would you go there? And I was like, well, how's that possible? He goes, well, listen, don't worry about it. We can make anything possible. He goes, let us speak to Cardiff. Are you willing, are you happy to go there? And I said, yeah, I'm, yeah, of course. So um, it happened. I honestly just went bump there, moved. And he was like, look, so it's, we got you to Cardiff for a year. Um, go and enjoy it. Go and be home, be with the family, you know. So it was like, great. Uh, I spoke to Dave Jones, was brilliant. And I went in. Uh, it was crazy because it was just a, you know, it was, it was a move that really should never or could never happen. I remember the crowd. Yeah, it was a very reaction. generous Man City, you know. Um, and it was, and I weren't in great shape. My knee wasn't great. Um, I was in America for about three weeks leading up to it. Uh, my knee blew up a little bit. Um, and I didn't feel as sharp as I, but the first game, Doncaster, um, didn't particularly play too well, but had a big impact um, in the game. And it was just something about it was special, you know, but I was telling you, I was one of the most nervous I've ever felt going into a game. Because, you know, when you feel like you're not in the best condition, yeah. when you're in good condition, you're okay. And everyone's expecting. Yeah, everyone, I'm like, I think you might be expecting more and more I can offer you at the moment, you know. But, you know, lucky enough, that game went quite well. But I, you know, I didn't particularly play, like I had good spells one or two games, but didn't particularly play well up till Christmas. It was a lot, I found a lot hard. Um, you know, I was injured for about six weeks my knee because it kept swelling, so we needed, a, you know, we needed time off it. Um, but the discipline with um, an attitude as well wasn't as, you know, I felt like there were players who turned up for training when they wanted. Um, I thought the discipline in the place wasn't great. Not what I've been, like, structured and, and used to. Um, and I, you know, I found that a little bit frustrating, you know. It was... Um, and I remember one game we played Bristol City, and I've mentioned it before. Um, we were, we were, I'm not sure we were drawing, but we weren't playing well. It was Bristol City away, I think it was New Year's Day. And I remember, like, we we're about to go out, we were about to lead the team out. And then one of the players are like, refusing to go out. So I was like, what's happening? He's like, he's not coming out. So find out someone's hit his phone because he was looking at the bets. All right, okay. Half time. So whatever bets he's had or whatever. And he's like, until someone gives my phone, I'm not going back out. Oh my God. Imagine that going into, we lost anyway, second half. What the and I fuck? remember it was like 10 minutes of the game towards the end. And I was like, I'm done. I'm like, this is not, this is not yeah. what I want to do anymore. I can't have this. Like for me, I was like, my heart was just, it felt like it just been ripped out. It was like everything I love about the game and feel about the game. I've this is not this is not the game. You know, when you have to like half time a player refusing to come out. Um I was like, and this is what we should be worried about the game. We just got beaten against Bristol C. You know? And it was just like I just don't know, that was a shock yeah. to me, you know. It was it was just really, and anyway, towards the end, got myself fit and then really come into a rich vein of form, a rich vein of form, sorry. Um, got to the playoffs. I've done my hamstring in the playoff, lost the red in any way. But the best team in the playoffs went, went up, Swansea, yeah, they were yeah, the best team. Yeah. Um, and Norwich got promoted that year. They were, they were better than us. We played them twice, they were better. Um, and who was the other team? 
Oh, wait, they're Derby, weren't they? No, 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 they never went. She was going to offer them 30 grand. Yeah, if they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, who was the other one? For? No, no, no. Um, Reading? You said no, Reading. Reading were in the playoffs of us. Forest were in the playoffs of us. Norwich, no, sorry, Norwich went up. It was in a QPR. QPR, there we are. QPR, yeah. And they were, they were better. They were, with, okay. yeah, with Terapt and all that. They had a real, yeah, so they were. And that was, that was that year. And then I had the second chance with Melky. Um, cause he wanted me to sign, but he didn't have a team. They were lost loads of numbers, yeah. players when I was, so a big shift in players, uh, got a team together, but I watched him quite a lot. Like I said, we got to play him in a league cup final, but I just loved what he had, yeah. the work ethic. Didn't have talent, didn't have talented players, you know, not like your, your Boffroids and all them, but they had real work ethic. They had yeah. real training. Yeah. It was like this, and he had discipline. It was a different. Players could different. pack their car, whatever they wanted. It was like, that weren't allowed. Players can turn up whenever they wanted. Players can eat whenever they wanted. Players can go can go on whenever they want. It was not allowed. He was like Malky was disciplined. Um, he would dig players out half time. I loved his substitutions. It was like, well, uh, you're off. You you you're off as well. Off you go. Get him. Get him. In you come. You know. And he would like dig players out. Dig me out. Why don't you track your man there? He's your man. And it was like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Because I like. Yeah, 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 people have a perception. I love that. You had an exception. Think, yeah, no, was, do no. yeah, that's right. It's right. If I haven't done it, tell me because you're right. Because if you haven't told me, I'd be more disappointed. Then you know mm. what I mean. It's don't let me off the hook either. Yeah. I deserve to. You know, you were right. You were spot on. I didn't. So if you see, if he, if the players seen him having a go at me, they knew like, oh, he's not off limits. None of us are. You know yeah. what I mean. And it was, which is right. And that's how we we were always getting promoted. Honest truth. I remember I spoke to the players. We had a little bit of a wall wall, lost against Peterborough away. And I said to Malky, look, I'll speak to the players today. Don't worry about it. And he was like, great. So I got him round and I said, listen, do not worry about, we're top of the league. See the group of players we have here. We're going to get promoted. Now, I know there's a little bit of panic creeped in. I know there's a lot of talk outside about, oh, we're going to bottle it. And, you know, because of the last few years, yeah, and we're the playoffs win and fire. Blackpool and that was This is not this team. This is not, you're not, we have one or two like wits and other were part of it, but don't worry about that. They're fine. We're drag these lot along. We ain't going anywhere apart from winning this league because you know why? We train too hard. We work too, we're all there for each other. There's a group. There ain't no one going to be hard, harder working than us and we're going to get what we deserve. So don't, don't panic. We've got two games coming up. I think it was Blackburn, we have Forest. We're going to get six points here. Calm down. Trust, trust what we do. Trust the work we do. It's going to be enough. And it was it. And we, we won it by like, you know, a number of games coming up. And it wasn't just me. It was just, it needed to be said. Yeah. Don't worry, don't panic. We've got nothing to panic for. Don't worry about what people are saying. Yeah, but they, that was the group before. <laughs> that was the group before them as well. You ain't that group. You know, you're a different group. You're a different group of players. And we have a different manager. Um, and then to win the league as well was just the icing on the cake. Yeah. Getting promoted was... But, you know, I wouldn't say it was a great season for me, Fat, but I, it was the first team. It was like I played a small part in a real hard-working team. And we all did. We all had little bits, little moments during the season. That's why no one got like 20 odd goals. We all like the highest goals. Team, goals. Yeah. yeah, because we all played a little role during that time. Um, and it was all done by the manager. Um, and I look at his periods as well. And I know it didn't end well. Um, and it was I, I I do feel both parties didn't do well with that. Yeah. Um, it shouldn't have been that way. It shouldn't have got where it got to, um, but it did. But all right, I understand his name is not allowed to be mentioned at the club, you know, by anyone surrounding the football club. His name's sort of been like wiped out of history. I think that's sad. And that's so sad. It's so, because you know what he done in two and a half years was incredible. <laughs> He's achieved more for us than any other have in... He is the best manager that Cardiff City in my lifetime have ever had by a long way. Long way. You think in two and a half years, League Cup final, playoffs with a squad he didn't even have. He didn't even have that team and he got him to a playoffs and then to go and win the league then. And outside the relegation zone when he went. Now... All right, I understand the circumstances. I understand there was some things that weren't right, but we got statues of people around places who've done exactly. less. Exactly. You know, and we speak way about people who've done way less for this club than what this guy done. Um, and he brought the club together. I'm telling you now, 
He brought the team together. He brought people from the outside. He had time for everyone. Um, and it just doesn't sit well with me how it's gone. And now I do, I always try and respect everyone's view. I really do. I'm always trying to be open-minded to everyone, but that, um, we don't talk about him enough. Um, and how I can you not talk about those seasons and achievements without a minute, though? Do you know because what? of how it how it went and how it's ended. Yeah, and I know it's how it's yeah. ended, and it, it, it didn't end. And it just, like I said, it's just such a shame it got to that. Yeah, um, where we were front page of papers, and it, that's not the no. it's not kind of see. No, you know what I mean. And it was just um, it was a shame. And I, I've, we all lost. We all lost. The fans lost. The club lost. You know, Malky certainly did, but even the players, everyone, you know. We lost a, you know, we, we lost a big part of history there and a real brilliant two years, you know, um, from a from a good, from a, I'd like what I know of the person, a real good man, a real good man who, who taught me a lot, taught me a lot, taught me a lot about me as well. You know, he was, he was top. He was really top. Next one. The current situation. Yeah, I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> um, Look, uh, whether or not you feel he should have had the job, Steve, you know, or supporters feel, or even anyone involved, that he should have had that role in the first place, is always up for discussion. Is always, you know what I mean? People are like, this guy coming in, or that guy, or if he was promoted from there, he must be, you know, Vincent's man, or he must be paid. I, you know, I'm always aware of what gets said. Uh, but he was, he was given a role and he'd done a good role to start, you know, gone away for a relegation zone because it wasn't looking good for that period. Now I look at the season, I look at the summer, the overall, you know, the change. So I think he brought in like 17 new players. So a lot of players went, the wage bill went down, uh, which had to, because that, that isn't sustainable. Um, but when you bring in 17 new players, it's going to take time. It is like we know we've brought in 15. Um, and it's going to take us time. We're still not where, you know, we believe the performances are going to get better as well. Um, I've watched Cardiff a lot this year because it's worked to where we play teams. They've played already. So, yeah. you know, you don't just watch one game, you watch other games because you want to see habits of that team. Um, and I've watched, so I've ended up catching a lot of Cardiff's games and I'm telling you, they're not far away. And, I, and I'm not saying it because it's like, I've looked at games like, they're not bad, you know, these. Cardiff are all right. They've like the, the way they break lines as well at times, the way they play, they're they're not they haven't taken their chances. All right, they didn't play that well against Bristol City. And I'm only saying this because we just played Bristol, but they had some great chances, by the way. They opened Bristol City up at times, which was really good play. And if they would have took those chances, the game would have been different. Um so I look at the game against Preston, because we had Preston, they were miles better than Preston. Should have won that. Should have won that comfortably. So those results could have been completely different. They could be on way different points to where they are now. But, you know, it's still early days. It's still early days. Now, why would you allow someone then to make 17 changes, change of playing style as well? And then after, you know, was it, so those 10 games, it must be about six weeks of the season, then suddenly feel it's not for him or he's not for you anymore. I find, um, I, I was surprised. I was surprised. Now, if you look at Cardiff's history over the last 10 odd years, now you really shouldn't be because there's been a lot of changes and managers, you know, it's one a year near enough, um, which is not always great. It's not, you know, it's not the stability you would want, but it does happen at a lot of clubs as well. Yeah. It, you know, Cardiff are not uh, immune to that. But when I, you know, I, I looked at it and I thought, well, they've changed the system, changed a lot of players. Now, what's the harm in giving him the time? Now, do you believe you're going to get promoted? Now, that's what, you know, do Cardiff believe they're going to get promoted? I'm not sure. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I, I don't know. Um, if I looked at the teams this season, I didn't see them in the promotion side. I thought there was going to be a year of stability building the team. Um, and now, who's going to come in and build that? Or what type of profile are you looking for? Are you not happy with the possession? Are you not happy you want more shots? Um I don't know. And that's the, you know, that's the questions maybe on the outside that, you know, you look at, because I look at a coach and I look at a manager. Um, you know, we, you know, we play Cardiff next. Now, who's going to be in charge? We don't know. Maybe Mark Hudson. Um, maybe he'll still be there or someone else will be there. But if you look at it, I see some of the names. 
um, some good names out there. I'm, yeah. I'm shocked Tuchel's name's not, not being mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> but you understand, there's a lot of good people out there who, but would you really take the role? I don't know. It's like, if you look at the history of, you know. Um, What's the problem like, Greg? I don't know. And that's the honest truth. I don't know enough about the club. And I, I mean that people automatically believe I would. I don't. Um, do you think the owners have a big part to play in it? I, I'm sure they do because it's their club. And, you know, they've invested a lot of money in a football club. Um, and I feel sometimes well, we're a little bit afraid of, don't say anything too much, just because he pulls it out and where would we be then? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Or we're also grateful as well for, for putting that money in because he has saved the club as well. So, but there's a part of it is, it's like, well, where do you want to be? How do you want this club to be run? You know, it can keep happening year after year that a manager and then, a change of a massive group of players again, um, wages being wasted or money going out on transfers at the right at the wrong age. You know, when you're paying five million for a 29 year old, 30 year old, you know, you know you're not going to get any value from that. So where's the investment in a young squad? Now, youth players, where are they? Or are they playing? Or where's your academy? What's that looking like? Now, I, I do know a bit about the academy, and I'd always say there's always good players here. This, this area has good footballers. Always has done. Um, and it does now. But are they able to get them in the first team and they get the right education? Now, are you coaching them the way that your first team is going to be playing? But then can you coach them the way from a young age that a first team's been playing when you're changing the manager? Because he's going to have a different outlook of and a different philosophy on what he wants to see. And I hate that word philosophy, but it's so unstable there where's stability here and yeah. where are they going to get to to get into there then it's going to be changed now if you're a new manager and you're coming in now I want to play young players but to play young players then comes inconsistency but if the average lifespan of a manager at Cardiff's last about a year I haven't got the time for inconsistency yeah, yeah. so I ain't playing any young players you know that's what a thought process would be like yeah. I haven't got that time because I'd be out of a job so I don't know. It's just one of those, play like, it's easy for me to have a voice and I, because I know the club and, I, and I'm from here. So, you know, it's, I, well, it's easy for me to keep an eye on it. Do you understand what I mean? But there's a part of me as well. I don't want to talk out of turn either. Yeah. I don't want to be, um, you know, talking something like I feel I know when I don't know. I don't, and that's the honest truth. I don't know what Mehmet wants to do. I don't know what Vincent wants to do. I don't know what Ken Chu wants to do. Um, I'm sure they have a plan, but at the moment from the outside, what I would be looking in, I'm not sure what I see at the moment. Do you understand? And I haven't been sure of what I've seen for a while with that. But maybe they do. Maybe they do. And maybe there's a, a card up their sleeve where they believe in the next year or two is they're going to get promoted again. Um, maybe they do. And, and if they do, then good luck to them. But at this present moment, it just, it, it, it just so, left me surprised. Thank <laughs> you.